Hello and welcome to Jay's studio here. Um, this will be another video on the Airy One ER20 and an upgrade that I'm doing today on that particular printer. Um, this uh, you can uh, you can click on my uh, my username down there and you can see that I've done an entire series on calibrating the ER20 for printing as well as some other nice or just some videos of some very nice prints that this particular printer has done. And I still think that in its price range, I really don't think there's anything out there that can touch it, given the fact that uh, um, what it features uh, as far as uh, the drivers, which are 2209s, 32-bit board, uh, the, um, uh, uh, the all-metal extruder. There's just a number of things that this does at a very low price point, especially when it's on sale for $60 or $80 off on Amazon, which happens quite often. Strongly recommend this printer. Um, and again, I have a whole series on how to calibrate and tune it uh, if you decide to get one and bring it into your home. But uh, today I'm going to install some anti-backlash nuts. Uh, anti-backlash nuts are the nuts that your Z-axis rods, you'll notice the Z-axis rods are not in the machine right now. I've already gotten them off of here. And I, will, I wanted to make the video not so long to where you have to see and see me twiddle with too many screws and do those kind of things. So this is, uh, I kind of set it up so that you can see uh, the, the, the meat of the process to install the anti-backlash nuts. So why would you install anti-backlash nuts? Well, on a printer like this, and again, I'm trying to have you see the Z-axis rod while I'm talking through this, but you'll notice that over here on the extruder side, there's quite a bit more weight on the, uh, that's affecting your X gantry here. So when you turn the stepper motors off after a print, or turn the printer off and the stepper motors are no longer energized, this side will tend to sag a bit. Um, and then your tramming, which is the squareness of your x-axis here on your, uh, your x-axis gantry here on the frame of the printer, will tend to sag a bit towards the extruder side. And you have to continue to watch that, etc. Well, one way you can stop that sagging from happening, or at least mitigate that sagging, is to install anti-backlash nuts. And anti-backlash nuts basically are nuts. This is a replacement one that I've already fitted up in here um, that are going to uh, use a fitting that has a slot. This slot will actually fit into the bottom of this other nut, but then there's a spring between them which keeps them kind of locked there, places tension on them. And then if that's locked up in the slot, the slot here, and this slot here, if they're locked together with the spring, pushing, kind of pushing, and then them unable to, to rotate here, uh, it will be very difficult for either side to sag, uh, even when you turn the stepper motors off. So uh, some printers come with this already installed. Uh, you're more, uh, not just higher end, but probably mid, mid range printers will already have anti-backlash nuts installed. Everyone's obviously uh, targeting a bargain crowd, and then there's th some things that you can do to upgrade it in this case. Uh, this is a, a worthwhile upgrade. So before we get into actually doing it though, let me tell you that you're gonna want to do some preparation. And so you're gonna have to pardon me while I move the camera, but to make this easier, there's a couple things that I've done. One, uh, you're gonna have to remove the top of your Area One ER20 printer. All it is is a plastic, uh, a plastic kind of cover on top of your frame. It has three nuts in the bottom. You take those three nuts off, with the included wrench that came with your ER20, um, and you can pop that right off, and now you have access to the gantry. The other thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna raise your x-axis up here and then use a zip tie. I actually had to put two zip ties together to zip tie up your x-gantry at a place where it's not going to sag. So what this is doing is holding that x-gantry up nicely while I do this work. Uh, in, in a relatively level fashion. Uh, you could do two of them even to be more secure. I did one, but more towards the heavier side and made sure that things were looking pretty good with regards to its squareness. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and have that tied off. Then what are you gonna wanna do? You're gonna wanna take off uh, the, once you, uh, once you get that all tied up, you're going to, again, pardon the camera movement, but your couplers here have screws and in this case, I had to come at it from this direction, has a grub screw, that tight, that top grub screw, and you're gonna use your medium size wrench from your ER20. That top grub screw, you wanna loosen all the way. Don't take it out, but just loosen it all the way so that the rod can come right out of there. And we did the very same thing, pardon the movement, for this side. Uh, we loosened up the grub screw, and then 
uh, um, even before we took off this nut up at the top, we just we just used our used our fingers and easily threaded off the lead screws uh, there for the z-axis. And I've placed them on both sides of my printer. Why am I saying that? Because because you, you kind of want to put them in the same way they came out. So I know that this tip here is the tip that should fit, feed down for either side of my threaded screw. Took the threaded screw out. Then you have to take off the old nut. This was the old nut that was on there. And one thing to be careful of when you take off the nut is that the little screws will have, you can see it between my thumb there, a little crush washer on the top of it, which kind of holds that still. Uh, they're easy to lose. In fact, this, this video is happening a good five minutes after I was planning to start it. Why? Because I lost one of these grubs. I took off the grub screw and I was doing it really carefully, but that little crush washer decided to spring off into the carpet and it was fun to find. Anyway, uh, you're going to want to uh, be careful and make sure you've gotten those uh, taken care of. Well, then you're going to take your brand new, uh, your brand new uh, anti-backlash nut um, and when and basically you're going to have a top form and then you're going to have a spring in the bottom the bottom connector. These are the springs in the bottom connectors for these. I've already fitted the top the top piece. Um, it, this in fact on this side I've already put it in with a screw. So uh, the screws are there. Uh, uh, the crush washers are underneath the screws and that one's already mounted. This one we have yet to put the screws in. Uh, I figured I would just at least do the manual labor um, on camera for one of them. And so here I'm going to take my handy dandy wrench and thread these in like so with the crush washer on top underneath the head of the screw. So what you want to do when you do this uh, before we get in there is like I'm... I'm going to where it kind of starts to tighten, but then I'm coming back just a little bit. I want it to have a little bit of wiggle uh, while I thread the screw in because you're going to see as I thread the screw in that it gets pretty interesting uh, because we've got to hold the spring up there uh, at the same time. So let me get this one in the same, same way. Comes down. Oh, it's starting to get a little bit tighter. Now I'm going to back it off just a little bit, and it gives me a little bit of mechanical movement that's available for taking care of this. So... How do we get the actual screw in there? Well, remember I showed you these two pieces. Sorry if the, try, there we go. I think the, maybe a little bit better with the focus, but if not, you get the idea. The, the top, this nut here has two slots. All of this goes inside the spring, and then the spring goes over uh, the little part that juts out of your, of the top portion of the nut. You're gonna push this up being careful not to like for it to become a projectile. And you want to get it up to where the bottom part is actually in a slot. It doesn't work if the bottom part isn't in a slot. <laughs> so let's see if I can get that squared away here. I'm going to actually turn this around because for some reason it wants to bunch up in a way that I don't like. There, that's much better. Once you get it up there, you're going to have to hold it just a little bit. And then what you're going to do is come with, come down with your lead screw through So that's not coming down fairly easily, so something's not quite right. So one thing I'm going to do here is uh, show you something else you can do, which I should have done right from the beginning, which is to place, uh, and I did it on the other side already, I meant to do it on this side before I started doing that uh, fitting piece. Let's take a little bit of white lithium grease on the tip of a Q-tip. It's a good chance to lube the inner threads of your anti-backlash nut. There you go. Cool. So. Let's see if we can get this 
pre-positioned a little bit better because boy that was not working like I was hoping it was going to. So I just put these on the Thinker SE the other day and they worked like a charm. So I'm just having some issues getting the these two pieces to fit together nicely so that I can screw down through them and get ourselves squared away. Let's see what I got now. There we go. There we are. And once you actually get it through, you can let go. Um, there's, it's not going to go anywhere because again, you've got the tabs keeping it from turning and the detention on the nuts so it can't fall down uh, by gravity, which you know these things actually are fairly well greased and the rods are fairly easy to move on the screws themselves. But with that happening right there, they're going to hold each other in place. And then this is going to just screw down into the coupler at the bottom, like, remember we undid the grub screws at the bottom. So this is going to continue to roll down too. And I'm rolling down and now I can tell that I'm actually moving the, uh, moving the side of the, um, over here. And although I'm, I don't need to tram this right now, I'm going ahead and tramming it a little bit, again, making sure that they're close, um, just so that it's not such a big leveling exercise later. In fact, I'm going to shift my zip tie over to that side. That's actually looking pretty close. And now what I'm going to do that that is in there, my anti-backlash is that is taken care of. Yeah, that's looking pretty good actually. And I'm having to hold this down a little bit so that it's fully seated in the coupler. Um, but now that it's fully seated in the coupler, um, down at the bottom I'm taking that grub screw and tightening it goal here is to make sure that we have a good connection to our stepper motor Sorry about the tediousness of having you watch this. This was, we'll only do one side right now on the video so that you get an idea of how it works. But uh, what I'm doing is making sure that grub screw is nice and tight and really gripping the Z rod or the, uh, the threaded rod for that, for the uh, Z axis in the coupler, that it's not gonna come up or, or unbalance. There we go. So, Right now, you don't see this, but the, as far as where it is on the axis uh, on the front, in fact, I can move this so you can, but even though we haven't even done the other side, if you look at the gradated markings on the ER20, we are really nicely trammed without any issues right there, and that backlash nut is now installed and will prevent that from this side from sagging. Although this is not the major side we're worried about. We're so worried about the other side. On the other side is exactly the same process. Let me show you. Um, you might think that, oh, well, I did the easy side and I'm not doing the more difficult side. But uh, as long as you buy the right type of black lash nut, and for the ER20, it's not going to be the round four screw one. It's just the straight two screw anti backlash nut. I will leave a, a link below in the description to an Amazon product that you can get uh, to get several of these anti-backlash nuts. Um, I got a package of four just because I was going to do the Thinker SE as well. Um, if you buy the correct nut, 
i.e. just the two screw nut instead of the four screw round one. Um, this fits right in and I didn't have to take off any wires. I didn't have to disassemble my, uh, disassemble my extruder. I didn't have to do anything over here other than like work a little bit more delicately around some of the pieces and parts, but everything was just as simple as, uh, as the other side. So I'm going to complete this up now and, and finish it up. Uh, uh, hopefully you found this useful. Uh, if you did, please like and subscribe. Um, I'm excited about uh, really working out the ER20 and some of the other printers that I've got uh, and to give you some kind of just like down-home advice on how to uh, make things better um, and have them perform their best. So happy 3D printing and we'll see you next time.